So hi guys, this is Swagat Abu and welcome back to Scootria Supari My Team Career Mode Part 10. We are, you know, done, almost done with this whole first season. We only have six more races left, finished with 10 of them. If you haven't seen the previous ones, I'll, you know, recommend you to go check it out because we've had a pretty wild season to love. A few uh, races where we actually got into points. And if you haven't seen the last episode, we had an engine blowout in France and yeah, that's the reason we see a red ICE. It was very unfortunate, but yeah, we need to try and get a new engine now before we go into the next race, which is in Belgium Spa. Obviously, Spa is a pretty decent uh, track. I really like it, but we have a lot of these upgrades up and we already have something which has gone wrong. Okay, so side profile has gone off. We still will get it before the you know Belgian Grand Prix, which is nice. So I am going to obviously put it on, but we have 2,000 resource points. So I was actually just wondering if I should go for engine cover in you know weight reduction, or should I go for engine redistribution and engine cover? So obviously I was debating about it for quite a bit. You can see it on screen right now. It takes 1,250, whereas we have a small discount and both of them pretty much take the same amount of time, which is after the Netherlands and before I think Monza that is. So we still have a long way to go with the development of this car and we can be hit with a regulation change for the next season. Of course, we were able to get Jehan Darwala in the team. We have a completely Indian team now. That's the reason we get a blue livery. And while I'm talking about that, we have a spark plugs failure as well. So the two things that I wanted to, you know, uh, the car to have, we don't really have it. We are focusing on Jehan though. We are trying to get a few specs here and there for the personnel and basically Jehan so that he can become slightly better than what he is right now. Of course, he's the last, dead last, completely obvious right now. But it's only, I think, two races till, you know, two races into this season. So we can give him a little bit of time to get used to the car. Obviously, we are still developing. We are bottom two right now, which is kind of bad. And Jehan not doing too much in the resource generation part anyway. So it is pretty hard right now with this car. But yeah, getting into quality now, it's going to be a long lap around Spa, obviously. We are running 8-5 wings, so I will be getting slightly more uh, pace on the straights, I guess. And the second sector is going to be awful. So let's just quickly, you know, try and just fast forward this whole thing and let's see where we end up at the end, obviously. And while, you know, we are on the topic of the next season, uh, I just wanted to say that we are going to have a completely Indian lineup. We're going to have an Indian team. Uh, probably might change the name Scootria Supari. You guys let me know down in the comment section if we should do that or should I just stick with Scootria Supari, my team career mode, of course. And we'll obviously, we'll have to see and check out what exactly the name should be. And of course, I've already finished making the next livery for, you know, our team. And let's just say it looks pretty clean. So I'm just actually very excited for season two and I hope you guys are as well. But coming to the end of this lap, we're around 14th the whole lap. But by the end of it, I think we lose out in the last turn, like in bus stop chicane. And we are down to 17th. This is more of a qualifying, you know, this is the pace that we should be having because our car is pretty much a back marker right now. And somehow I was able to get the car into points. So I have, of course, you know, upped the level of the AI as well so that we have a bit more of a competition. And it's just not like, you know, it's just not plain and standard where I'm just winning a lot of races and... Yeah, getting points, getting more resources, and developing the car even better than what it, it already is. Jehan is literally dead last. We are 17th. Let's see how this race goes. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Russell, and Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Perez. Sainz, Ricardo, Fernando Alonso, and Esteban Ocon. Gasly, Bottas, Mick Schumacher, 
and Magnuson, Fettel, Sonoda, Kumar, and Lance Stroll, Albon, Joe, Latifi, and Jehan Daruvala. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. It's a pretty straightforward strategy. It's just a one stopper, mediums to hards. And let's try and execute this. Maybe get into points. Who knows? It's going to be a you know very long shot to try and actually get some points here. Because we are starting 17th. The car is looking the car looks very good, but does not perform as well as it looks. That's the only problem. And we are obviously uh, missing a lot of sponsors on the car as well. So we'll have to see exactly you know how that part goes. But coming to the end of formation lap, we are trying to you know form up on the grid. This is like the easiest way to get a purple. Just go extremely slow, one or two kilometers per hour, and just stop it at purple. Probably will be changing it from immersive to broadcast formation lap next season. But it's five red lights for the Belgium Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. We have a pretty average start. We still have cold tires. No idea how that uh, turned out. But we are going to dive bomb like a madman down the inside of Vettel over here, going over the curbs. Very bad exit. But we are still in front of Sonoda at least. And while I'm saying that, Sonoda just flies past us. And he just breezes past us completely. So, pretty hectic start already. It's been... Uh, we've lost, I think, one position. And we've actually gained it back as well. The, all the positions that we lost, we just gained it back. So, net, we are still 17. So, we didn't really lose much. We didn't really gain much. So, we'll try and go down the inside. I am going to give him as much space as possible. But because of that, we mess up our next turn. We're going side by side to turn 5, I believe this is. And slight squeeze to stroll and we have stayed in front of stroll thankfully sunoda and everyone in front pretty much is going extremely slow through the stone and no idea what's going on i don't think anyone has damage over here and of course we over here run simulation damage so this is going to be pretty bad and latifi has overtaken stroll we go slightly wide thankfully no warnings over here but Latifi is right behind us, using a bit of ERS just to stay in front of him. We have lost touch slightly to Sonoda because we are under pressure from Latifi. Who would have thought we would be under pressure from Latifi? Going side by side, almost, you know, having a contact over there. But thankfully, just keeping it clean. We are going to dump a bit of ERS here just to stay in front of Latifi. Because he is extremely quick on this first lap. And Matt's absolutely flying. We're going side by side. This is not going to end well. I had to go slightly wide, giving him as much space as possible, using a bit of ERS here and there just to stay a tad bit in front of him. But coming out of bus stop chicane now, we have, you know, stayed in front of Latifi. And Latifi and Stroll are having a battle as well. They're going side by side. Latifi is probably going to lose his position over here, but we'll see how it goes. We're going extremely close to Sonoda. Almost lost our front wing. As I said earlier, we are on sim damage so even the slightest of contacts on our front wing is you know literally just it'll shatter into pieces but yeah going through radion and or rouge over here onto camel straight we are going to use a bit of ERS just to try and stay within one second of sonoda of course we need that uh, drs from him in the next lap if we lose that it's pretty much a game over for us so i am going to try and stick right with sonoda till I can either overtake him or maybe till the end of the race, who knows. But the one thing which I actually noticed was these guys were running, I think, lower wings because they were going extremely slow through this turn, but they were extremely quick in every other part of the circuit. So the slow corners were actually pretty slow for the AI, whereas on the straights, they were just extremely, you know, extremely quick. So we have managed to stay right behind uh, Sonoda, obviously. And we have a 1.3 second gap to Latifi. This is obviously a very crucial part for the race. As I was saying earlier, we need to stay in front of Latifi and just stick with uh, Sonoda and the back in front. Skipping to lap 5 now, we have actually, you know, just managed to stick with them. Magnuson and... Actually, you know, Sonoda overtook Magnuson, which is kind of nice. And we have yellow flags for a brief second. It goes off and it comes back again. And there's a car to the right which is stranded. So let's just get a quick replay on what exactly happened. And it is Bottas who has, I think, lost his engine. But there is no smoke coming out of the back of the car. There's no smoke off to the diffuser, I'd say. And he just suddenly just pulls to the right and stops. So maybe a mechanical issue or a hydraulics issue. No idea. 
But that's, you know, game over for Bottas right there. We obviously skipped to lap 5, uh, just, you know, got into DRS and we are stuck with Magnussen for the rest of this whole race. Set the tyres to hard as well because in between, I actually, you know, by mistake set it to soft. So <laughs> I had to, you know, set a few right tyres here and there. We were losing a lot of tyre wear, which was kind of weird because I am not used to so much uh, tyre being, you know, consumed on Spa especially. But yeah, it was happening. But thankfully, we had Magnussen and this whole pack in front, which I think had Sunoda, Vettel and... I think it was Schumacher, which was, you know, Magnussen's teammate. I'm not sure. But yeah, we had all these, you know, four of them in the DRS train and we were right with them. We were just sticking with them and all I wanted to do was just stay with them because we were getting dragged along in a car, which is uh, pretty much it shouldn't be here. And we are 3.3 seconds away from Latifi. At the end of lap 6 now, we have a DRS malfunction. This was like a make or break obviously for us and this was literally, you know, a DRS broke and this like, put me in a lot of stress because obviously we had to try and stick with them. I had a lot of ERS, as you can see we have 74% ERS even in lap 7. We are able to keep up with these guys who are way faster than us, at least on paper and yeah, we were just able to dump a little bit of ERS here and there and stick with these guys because of DRS and now that I don't have DRS it's going to be extremely hard to be even close to these guys. We will give it our best shot though. We're gonna try and just keep up with these guys if we can because as I said they are extremely quick but because of DRS and a bit of ERS as you can see we have 66% ERS still and yeah we're gonna try and keep up with them. It's lap 10 now. The tires are pretty dead I would say that because we were already on 46% by I think lap 6 or 7 and now it's lap 10 uh, I think this is going to be the lap where we should be pitting and yeah there we go we go right behind Magnuson and both of us are going to pit Magnuson going extremely slow over there we had to break slightly bit more but yeah getting under the 80 km per hour speed and we are into the pits obviously Magnuson in the house and us both of us will be extremely close during the pit stop even an Aston Martin behind us is uh, coming in for its pits we do go in at almost the same time and here is a replay of what happens it was extremely close the boys in Scuderia Supari are actually doing a pretty good job of the pit stops we had a 2.3 second pit stop which is pretty decent but instantly as soon as Magnuson came out of the pits he just bolted away and almost has one second on us and this as i said is going to be an extremely important part of this race because if we actually you know have some good pace over here of course drs is back online as well right now the team has fixed it so if we use the drs stick with magnuson over here we could actually undercut a few people in front uh, i feel like we will be able to undercut shumaka and sunoda who haven't pit yet it's mostly because obviously their counterparts that is Gasly and Magnussen have already pit and they get first preference so we could undercut them if we have a good time over here but as you can see we are struggling quite a bit going extremely wide but thankfully not getting a warning over there because we did slow down slightly and the lines were just awful because of the cold cold hard tires whereas Magnussen could instantly just fire those uh, tires up and now is absolutely flying. He, again, he has a 1.2 second gap. We are not in the DRS. That's being the main thing because we were just banking on DRS. We got out of the DRS range because our DRS stopped working. And now that it's working, we're not even in the DRS zone. Teammate is in the pits now. So Lawson is... Oh, sorry. Jehan is actually in the pits. I completely forgot we have a new uh, teammate now. But yeah, uh, he's in the, into the pits. We are going to try and it's going to be extremely close between us and the cars in front. They are coming out of the pits right as we speak. And Vettel and I think that's Sunoda just came out behind Magnussen. So technically speaking, Magnussen has undercut both of them. But with his amazing pace, he could just keep the car in front of... Like he basically overtook both of them. 
Schumacher is still in front of Magnussen though on cold tires, so we might get a Haas v Haas one on one in just a bit. As soon as you know Magnussen catches up to Schumacher, and he is absolutely flying on these hearts. But yeah, we have caught up to Vettel. We did get DRS over there because. Uh, they came out of the pits and we're going f around the outside of Vettel. A very unorthodox place to actually make a move, but we actually make it stick. We give him a slight squeeze getting uh, out of the turn, but somehow we are in front of Vettel now. A nine, almost a 19th gap to Sunoda in front and this is not looking too good for us because we have to get that DRS for sure. Because if you don't get into the DRS range, it's pretty much a GG for us and even like of 12th is up for grabs over here. So we are going to give it everything, everything that we have in the tank and Sunoda is 9th away still. So we have to use a bit of ERS over here just to stick with Sunoda. Vettel also is sticking very, very close to us right now. He's only 4 tenths behind and the gap doesn't look that uh, huge obviously in the virtual mirror as well and I can every single se second that is going by. I am just looking at Vettel as he's closing in and closing in and closing in and we are not able to do the same thing to Sonoda even with DRS. I don't think Sonoda has DRS because of the gap that he has to Magnussen but we are trying to catch up to Sonoda but they have some crazy straight line speed on these hard tyres. They are slightly slow in the second sector so I feel that they are running lesser wings compared to me. Obviously we are on 8-5 wings, I don't know if they are on 0-0 wings but Vettel is catching up so we, I am dumping all the ERs that we have, dumping quite a bit just to stay in front of Vettel over here as well and hopefully Vettel doesn't go for a move down the inside, he looks just for a second, he tries to go for the move but thankfully we just keep it you know, clean, we keep it on the track and there is no contact made and we're skipping to lap 14 now, we are closer to Sonoda right now and as I was saying, Schumacher and Magnussen are going side by side. This was inevitable, Magnussen had some amazing pace on those hards. We go slightly wide over there and try to go around the outside of Sonoda over here. Schumacher has been overtaken by Magnussen, it's an exact similar move that I had uh, with Vettel. Sonoda giving us space, I also try and give him as much space as possible but you can see in the virtual mirror that Sonoda and Vettel are going side by side right now. Vettel down the inside and does make the move stick. So Vettel waited behind like a wise uh, fox and yeah, took the position as soon as he got a chance for it. Lap 18 now, we have somehow stayed in front of Vettel as well as Sonoda. Schumacher and Magnussen are gone 3 seconds almost. I slow down over here thinking, you know what? Before the DRS line, let's just slow down, let Vettel through. Let's get DRS on the straight because otherwise we are going to 100% get overtaken by both these AI. So I'm going to try and defend from Sunoda as much as possible than, you know, attack Vettel over here. And Sunoda does get boxed in. We're going to try and take the outside line over here. But Vettel suddenly just breaks and we have front wing damage. This just came out of nowhere. No idea what happened. So here's a replay of what happened with a different camera angle. And this doesn't really help us out at all. So let's try and get a different angle as well over here. And let's see what exactly happened. And I think Vettel going into the turn locks up slightly because of the overspeed that he had. And here's replay. Yes, he front right. He locks up his front right. And because of that, we have an orange wing now. Oh, this is just gone from good to bad to bad to worse. We were struggling on these hearts from the get-go and our car is also not the best car. We were able to stick with these guys in front which was kind of a miracle but we have Albon only 6 seconds behind and Joe is right behind him so this is actually going to get extremely difficult to keep these guys behind because with the front wing gone it's going to be very hard to keep them behind. As I was saying lap 20 now Albon is right behind us. He has caught up 6 seconds in just 2 laps and was almost side by side with us going into this final straight over here. So we do break at the right time for bus stop chicane over here and I was contemplating about going into the pits but I thought that we will be losing a lot of time 
if we went into the pits and four laps were actually not enough to gain that whole all the positions back so as you can see Albert going down the inside he just has a way too much turn in right now because we have front wing damage and there's nothing I can do about it even if I pit I think I would have come out behind uh, Latifi who's I think running last and it would have been even worse to try and overtake them on soft tires. Yes, it could have been done. We have a proper fight with Alban over here going side by side in the camel straight. I am going to break slightly early over here, trying to give him space, going side by side still. And this has been extremely close between Alban and myself right now. And because of all this fighting, Joe has got up to us and is in the fight as well. So Joe has a chance of nabbing P17 from us. Of course, this is not for points, but we are still trying to battle it out on the track and just try and, you know, just get some positions over the other teams which are around us, especially against um, the Williams, maybe even the Alfa Romeos, as well as the Aston Martins. So this is proper, you know, just for <laughs> dignity as, uh, as of now. But yeah, we're going to try and close up to Albon if we can, but let's be honest here. With the front wing damage, there's nothing I can do. Coming up to the last lap now, 20 second lap or 20 seconds, Joe goes down the inside. We are going to try and keep it around the outside over here. We have an extra uh, replay as well of an outer camera or should I say a third person camera right now. And Joe trying to go around the outside over here which makes it in, down the inside for the next turn. We are still side by side. Somehow, even with the front wing damage, we are able to keep it just in front of Joe and we have 25% ERS over here to just spam. There was a slight glitch in the video. I don't know what exactly happened there. But yeah, as you can see right now, we have four cars right behind each other. Joe and I think that is Latifi going side by side and so is our teammate now. It's become two by two and it's a proper formation going into the last lap and the last corner over here. Joe trying to give it all he can but Stroll does overtake him towards the end and Latifi also stays in front of our teammate Jehan Darwala. We came 17th. We could have uh, probably come around 15th, I think. It was it have been around 14th or 15th. But because of the front wing damage, we ended up all the way down in 17th. What a race this has been. We had so many fights throughout the field. And yeah, this has been such an amazing race. Even though we couldn't get points, it just shows that we have a lot of work to do still on this car. We have to upgrade so many things. And... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, hectic race over here. Verstappen wins the Belgian Grand Prix. The Red Bull have been making a nice comeback. As I, uh, If you have not seen it earlier, the McLaren, at least Lando Norris, is doing pretty well to put that McLaren up in the podium almost for the last 4-5 races now. And yes, yeah, slowly the McLaren is rising up in our uh, this alternate universe at least. But yeah, towards the end of the race as well, we gave it whatever we had in the car. The car couldn't go faster. There's a lot of development that we have to still work on and try and get some better upgrades. And hopefully, the season two with uh, the better, you know, <laughs> let's say the better livery as well as the whole team, we make a lot of progress and maybe, you know, get to a midfield team because I don't think we can go from a bottom team all the way to, you know, a front runner. So it's going to be hard. Jehan didn't come last. He came 21st because of a DNF, thankfully. But yeah, let's quickly go and check the standings as well. Let's see how the whole thing looks like now. And Perez is first, Leclerc is second, but Verstappen is slowly catching them up. Sainz over here, though, is not doing himself any favours. Red Bull is still in the lead with 28 points to Ferrari. It's somewhat, you know, what's happening in real life as well. We have 27 points right now. 10 points more than Haas and Alfa Tauri, which is a pretty decent buffer. But, as I said, anything can happen in the last five races which are left. And we'll just have to see how all those, you know, go through. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.